Welcome everybody to another new video and uh, yeah today I wanted to talk about three Blu-ray labels that I find to be really rather underrated. Now granted these don't release massively impressive limited editions or anything on 4k from what I have gathered but they do release films that I enjoy and at the end of the day isn't that all it's about when it comes to Blu-ray collecting. So uh, yeah these are the three Blu-ray labels are uh, Medium Rare, Fabulous Films and Film Cut. Now uh, Medium rare, I only have a few from, so I'll show you all of those. And uh, yeah, they are quite a varied um, uh, array of films, to be honest. First of which, from the 80s, we have the thriller film Blue Thunder. Now, this is a really, really good uh, thriller, kind of become action film. Uh, think of it as uh, basically, a, um, you know, a kind of a kit, but without an AI artificial intelligence. It's just a really, really smart. Uh, well advanced helicopter that is being used for nefarious reasons and the pilot in charge of it is uh, not going to deal with that so uh, yeah and yeah you've got Roy Schneider in it and it's a yeah really really good film this was only released in 2021 so uh, yeah pretty nice blu-ray on that then we have the sci-fi film from 1955 this island earth a little bit gimmicky in some regards and that rear end yeah <laughs> it's, it's a little bit silly but Again, it's the kind of film that you wouldn't see released by more well-known Blu-ray uh, labels. And then you've also got Small Soldiers by them. I find this to be really well rather underrated, to be honest. It's not Joe Dante's best film. It's hardly a Gremlins, but uh, yeah, pretty solid film in its own right. And uh, yeah, it's got a good cast in that as well. And then Fabulous Films, they put out stuff that is equally as uh, you know odd in some regards. Even though you've got the two sci-fi films here. Then you've got Journey to the Far Side of the Sun, which, again, that only came out last year. So, pretty new release on that. And then, It Came From Outer Space. Again, far from the best sci-fi going out there. But, again, something that I would, would be, you'd be unlikely to see. And uh, it's these kind of films that I feel don't get enough, you know, attention. It's like um, with the um, Eureka release. What was it? Uh... The uh, free um, Monster One collection. It's like stuff like this is what I should I want. It's these kind of you know older sci-fi black and white films that I want to see, and there's not enough of those that are given you know the time of day unfortunately. And yeah, then you've also got stuff like the House of Long Shadows from Fabulous Films. Again, this was only released. Yeah, this was released this year, and uh, again, fantastic cast of horror icons. And uh, yeah, really well done effort that. And then you got more 90s stuff like shopping and out of sight. So a really nice variety from all of them. But then Film Cut really just does, goes, is a business really. They've done, again, even more odd kind of stuff in some regards. You've got, the, again, another 90s film, Sudden Death in terms of action films, which again is a really, really uh, glorious effort. It's basically die hard in a stadium, but I love it nonetheless. Then you've got, you know, stuff from like the sort of Hammer or Amicus Productions. You've got the Hammer film, The Curse of the Werewolf of Oliver Reed. And then you've got the Amicus Productions horror anthologies, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Yeah, it's just this kind of stuff that I like. And they're like, you know, they're British films at the end of the day. And then you've got stuff from, you know, you've got a World War II film, Six for Three Squadron with Cliff Robertson. Some fantastic aerial combat in this. And uh, yeah, good cast and uh, yeah, it's well directed and yeah, it's just all very well done really. And again, it's something that I wouldn't expect to get a a, a wide major release from others. And then you've got the 70s disaster films like the Airport series or Earthquake. Again, not the best of films. These aren't the best of their genre from the 70s. Towering Inferno and Poseidon's Adventure are definitely better. But again, stuff that this you wouldn't expect and even though this airport series isn't a box set they've still got you know individual discs of all four of the films which is again nice to see sure i would have liked it in a, you know in a fancy box set but then again it would have been even more expensive to buy so and then you got the 80s classics well classics as well as i'm concerned harry and the endersons which yeah childhood favorite i remember watching this so much back in late 90s early 2000s that i ended up breaking the vhs tape and player all at the same time because the player the player ate the tape and it wouldn't come out anymore so yeah finally i've got blu-ray so that's not going to be a problem 
and then Invaders from Mars. Now this was quite a rare release I imagine because it came out in 2014 or 2015. Yeah, 2015. I couldn't find it anywhere for cheap so I actually have to spend a fair bit of money but as far as remakes uh, of 50s films in the 80s go, it's a fairly decent effort. No, it's no Blob or The Thing or The Fly but yeah, it's still a really, really good effort and uh, yeah. Done, directed by Toby Hooper, done by uh, Canon Films, the second of their three films that they did together, or the third of their three films that they did together. Yeah, I think it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, then Life Force, and then this. But yeah, I really rather enjoy this. And uh, yeah, it's well worth seeking out if you can afford it and you can find it. So uh, yeah, they aren't the uh, most reputable of um, labels. Like I said, they don't do massive limited editions, 4Ks, you know, booklets. A couple of those have come with posters, but... Again, they're not the the best kind, you know, they're not the thick kind of paper that you get with our video, for instance. But still, I really enjoy them. They're putting out films that I really rather enjoy. And uh, yeah, I hope that they continue doing business, quite frankly, because, yeah, they're putting out the kind of films I want. And like I said, at the end of the day, that is what film collecting should be about. It's about films that you actually want to watch and not films that you can just say you've got. So, uh, yeah, seek them out if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, if you've got any from these labels I'd like to know what you've got and whether or not you're interested in any of these kind of films in general nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye